Charities everywhere in Scotland are facing big cuts to their funding as government budgets are squeezed. It's forced some to close their doors. But one charity in Glasgow has become more entrepreneurial to survive. The Govan Integration Network has set up a new interpreting service to raise money. And as Julie Peacock reports, it's already seeing the cash roll in. Are you satisfied now that you're, the matter's now been resolved? Working with interpreters is an almost daily occurrence at the Easter House Citizens Advice Bureau. It's a service that's been in huge demand since Glasgow became a centre for asylum seekers and refugees 12 years ago. But for one charity, this was also a gap in the market. The Govan Integration Network were facing a 60% cut in funding because of council cuts. Looking for a new way to raise funds, they decided to set up their own interpreting business. Linda Jap is the project's coordinator. It was really, how can we generate this income ourselves? And we looked at other funders, but it just wasn't viable. So we thought, what can we do to create our own income? And obviously the idea of the interpreting agency, which would offer work to refugees in the city, um, voluntary opportunities to asylum seekers and also help generate income for us so that we could support our drop-ins and other community activities. The interpreting service is one of an increasing number of social enterprises in Scotland. The idea is that it doesn't just make money but also provides a service that benefits the wider community. In the Citizens Advice Bureau in Easter House, advisor Tracy Miller relies on interpreters to help clients. Particularly if there's complex forums, which quite often if you're applying for housing or for benefits, often the forums are quite lengthy and complex. And people who have English as their first language often have difficulty, therefore there's an increased need for people who do not have English as their first language. So without the interpreters, it would be impossible really to deliver the service. It also creates employment and work experience for refugees. Jyoti Chopra has recently moved from Pakistan to Glasgow and is one of 200 interpreters working for the business. This job helps me in many ways uh, because I've been volunteering with the GCIN people uh, for about a year now um, and I've taken on this vol- uh, interpreting job as a vol- on a voluntary basis as well uh, but It kind of gives me an impression of how the working environment in UK is, um, in Scotland especially, and how to approach different agencies, um, approach different people in terms when you're working in your working area. The charity service voiceover has been up and running for just seven months, but it's already won translation contracts running into millions of pounds from the Red Cross, the Scottish Refugee Council and the Citizens Advice Bureau. For Linda, this move into social enterprise was essential if the charity was to survive. You've really got to make your own way, you've got to generate your own income, you've got to just constantly be thinking on your feet if you want to stay around and you can't wait around for the council to fund you forever. So it was just, it it kind of seemed like a natural progression to do this. The success of the business venture has secured the future of the integration network in Govan. And with budgets being squeezed, entrepreneurialism could be the answer for other charities in these straitened times. Now, what's happening on the roads? Here's Teresa in the Highlands. The A95.